Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host Jeremy Ricci here at WWDB 860 AM Studios, high atop the City Line Avenue skyline in Philadelphia, every Thursday at 3 p.m. and every Saturday at 6. If you want to ask us a question or you have a real estate need, give us a call at 267-988-2000. Addicted to real estate, who are we? What do we do? We buy houses. We're full-time real estate investors. And when we buy a house in Philadelphia, all we do to it is fix it up, make it beautiful, spend money, and put wonderful people in it. So we're helping to beautify Philadelphia one house at a time. We also have a real estate agency where real estate agents who want to be investors and investors who want to be real estate agents can hang their license. We have three offices for our Addicted to Real Estate Agency, one in Montgomeryville, one in Hatboro, and one in Huntington Valley. We also do real estate education meetings. So if you're an investor and you want to learn how to buy houses with none of your own money or all the advanced techniques that Addicted to Real Estate has perfected over the years, you got to come out to one of our meetings. best way to come to our meetings is... Go to AddictedToRealEstate.com with the number 2, AddictedToRealEstate.com with the number 2. Put your name and email address in, and I'll send you an invitation to all of our meetings. So, Jeremy, what's going on today? Lots of stuff going on. We're uh, moving and grooving. We've got deals in the pipeline. we got deals closing. I'm really liking the uh, what we have going. You know, it's it, it's been a good, good couple months. It's been a good summer. I'd say it's been a good year. Good year, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we've had a good year. I just looked up the numbers of uh, how much money we made this year, and uh, even I was like, wow. Yeah, there's a comma in there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So what are we going to talk about today? I wanted to talk about how fun this business could be. There's a lot of people that are on the sidelines. There's a lot of people that have day jobs that really don't like what they do, and I think it would be good to just – Tell people about what being a real estate investor is like and how much, you know, every every job has its headaches. Of course, there's headaches in real estate investing, but I'd like to talk about the fun side of it. And, we, you know, we could talk about the other side of that coin, too, if you want later on. Well, I don't think there is another side to the coin. Yeah. There's only one side. We don't like talking about negative stuff, right? We no. don't who, who does that? <laughs> if you start talking about negative stuff, I'm going to walk out in the parking lot. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to talk about how fun the real estate investing business is and, uh, and, and how one of the greatest things that you get out of being a real estate investor is you get control of your own destiny. Now, I always tell people, I say, if you could be a real estate investor your whole life and you never became like a millionaire or a multimillionaire, which incidentally would be practically impossible in the real estate business, but if that happened – where you never really made any major money, but you did provide for your family and for yourself your whole life, that alone would be worth it. That alone would be worth it. And it's practically impossible for that to happen. So we're going to talk about that when we come back. We're also going to be talking about how people can hang their license in our office and be part-time agents. And if you're a part-time agent, you can make yourself a lot of money, and we're going to discuss how that can be done. So uh, stick around as we discuss these topics and more. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going. 
When dealing with your home financing, you need a lender you can trust. A mortgage lender like Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated. The purchase of your home will likely be the largest financial investment you will make in your lifetime. Work with a mortgage provider who considers your long-term financial goals and puts you first. Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services will provide you competitive mortgage rates and service beyond belief for every step of the loan process. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today to visit about your mortgage needs. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. Robinson Insurance Group is addicted to real estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the Internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. So let's get started talking about a topic I love, and that's real estate investing. And one of the benefits to real estate investing is it's fun. Yes, it sure is fun. We have a good time. I mean, all the stories, I mean, when we go out with our friends and we tell the stories, I mean, people that are interested in real estate investing, you know, it, it's it, the time just flies. When every single deal has its own unique nuances and uh, there's really just some, some fun stuff that happens. I was, <laughs> we were talking about the, uh, the deals that we've done and all the free stuff that we've got. I know we need a couple of fridges and dishwashers or washer and dryer at one of our places right now. And I mean, I, I can think of all the things I negotiated into deals. I even have patio furniture that I, from a house that I didn't buy. I had a refrigerator from a house that I didn't buy. When I went to the house, I said, what are you doing with this stuff? I said, well, I'm not, not interested in your house, but I am, I am, uh, I'm interested in your patio furniture. And the guy said, you know, my wife, we're, we're getting a divorce and, uh, you know, she's supposed to come up for this for this stuff, and she's not coming for it. So just take it. You know, so just just some fun stuff. You get some free free furniture, free uh, free appliances. I mean, that's just one one of the things I have fun with is negotiating into the deal. Like I I had a a lawnmower that I negotiated. I didn't even need a lawnmower because I have somebody mow the lawn. But it's just fun. It's just you know, see what you can get. You know, how about hey, there's a car in the garage. Does that come with the house? You know. Did you negotiate for that guy's ashes the time you got that? No. <laughs> That was a, a gal's ashes. We bought a house that had some ashes in it. It was full. It was actually in a a bar that was filled with un, unopened booze. And I don't drink, so I just kind of gave that to some other people. But it was also ashes, and I don't. I don't no, we we profited off that. There was a big bar, like a self standing bar. It's not a bar that somebody built. It's like a bar somebody bought. Yeah. And um, it was a big like U shaped bar, and the nice bar stools too. Yeah, and we said did it. To the tenants who were going to rent the property, you want us to keep that bar here, or do you want us to get rid of it? And they were like, "Oh, we definitely want that bar." And I said, "Okay, well, you know, we're going to have to charge you for that." So I think we've been charging them like a hundred dollars a month for yeah, a year, m- monthly installments. Right? So we got twelve hundred bucks for that for that bar. Yeah, and the other thing that's fun is I just really enjoy meeting people, and the amount of people that you can meet in this business. You go knocking on doors, you go to the real estate meetings, that, that you know, come out to our meetings. It's just bunch of interesting people some some interesting characters we're down in florida and we're we're talking to people that own these big uh, resorts and things like that and you got some really interesting birds you know 
I don't know. The, the, uh, that's definitely fun, but the thing that I find the most fun about it is is that you get to decide what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. So in the real estate investing world, there's many different avenues that you can take to become a successful investor. You don't have to do it exactly the way we do it. You can, you can become a guy who buys foreclosures. You can become anything you want to become. There's lots of different ways to do this business. So if you're not having fun, just pick one of the other ways that you find is fun. And being in control of your own destiny, it's priceless to be able to do that, to just get up in the morning and you're going to go to the office when you're, when you're ready to go to the office. And that's it because no one's really making you go there. And you chase whatever it is that you feel like chasing. So you tend to do things that are fun for you and things that you enjoy doing and you try to buy houses that you'd be – not only make money off of, but houses that you'd be proud to own. So I like to do a lot of buy and hold investing. And I often will look at a building and I'll say to myself, I'll think, do I, do I want to own this building for 10 years from now? Do I want to tell people I own this building? Because if, if I'm ashamed that I bought a building in a certain neighborhood, then I'm certainly not going to buy it because it's just not something I'm proud of. And I like to say that the real estate deals that you do, the really good real estate deals, the really successful, profitable buildings, they become almost like a monument to your good business decision making. And it's something that you'll be continually proud of and you'll be and you'll be dying to show it to people. When your relatives come in come into town, you you say, Hey, wanna go take a ride? I want to show you this new building I bought. That's the kind of stuff that's fun for me. Kind of like playing Monopoly in real life, like we talked about before. And talk about fun. It's like a board game, right? You're you're uh, you're rolling the dice with, uh, well, hopefully not making too risky decisions, but you're actually there. You know, there's, there is some luck involved in real estate. There's some timing involved, but you you have to know all the tools of the trade. You have to have the tricks, you know, in your pocket to be able to when that opportunity presents itself. But when you get lucky sometimes and you get find a good opportunity, and it's your job to make it a good deal. But it's like playing Monopoly. We bought a couple. Uh, retail stores that were next to each other, and maybe we can, you know, parcel up this whole thing. So uh, it's it's a it's fun. It is a fun business. Well, you know, uh, there is luck in the real estate business, but it seems like the smartest people and the hardest working people have all the luck. Yeah, but you know, it's kind of like the more rocks you turn over, the luckier you are going to be at, at finding a, a good deal. So the, yeah. the, wor- the harder you work at it, the more you work at it, the luckier you'll, you'll get with it. So, you know, we we drive around and I buy houses, vehicles. Um, we have multiple trucks that say I buy houses on them. They're black with big red letters. The letters are probably like uh, 14 inches high, something like that. And um, if, you, if you've, I've found my truck on Google Earth, and you can actually read what the side of the truck says. That's how high the letters are. And uh, we also have a. Uh, a BMW, like convertible, a little two-seater that I drive around in that says I buy houses on it. And people don't normally wrap um, like luxury vehicles like that. Usually people that own that those kind of cars, they park them in the driveway and they drive them around in the summertime with the top down. And I made it my, um, my primary vehicle, and I drive it around all the time with the top down. And, and it really catches people's eyes. And, you know, they look at it and they, they all know. I mean, it's not like you're going to find another red convertible that says, I buy houses all over it. So it's very unique. We're driving around town the uh, the other day, and my, my brother-in-law is on the phone. I see his car, and uh, he, he says to, he's on the phone with my sister, and he says, I think I saw Jeremy driving, which I, I find funny because uh, what do you mean you think? It's pretty obvious. That it was me. If it's in a big eye by houses truck, how many of those do you really see? Yeah, well, I say that to people all the time. They said, "Oh, I, I just wanted to stop in to see you." And I always say, "Well, uh, how'd you know I was here?" Yeah, you right. Know? <laughs> or, or, uh, or, or when people come up to you on the street and they say, "Oh, you buy houses?" <laughs> oh, obviously, no. It's yeah. it's on the truck, and they say, "You know, I, my my all, my response is, yeah, we try to keep it a secret." <laughs> Fourteen inch letters going by. Yeah, so. working for yourself is a is a fun thing, and. And driving around in a car that tells people what you do, it, it's weird. Sometimes you'll go a whole year where people will call you, but you don't do a real estate deal with it. And, and I had a truck um, that I owned for three years. 
And the first year, I really didn't do a deal from it. The second year, I didn't do a deal from it. The third year, I did two deals from it, two deals. The first deal, we made $11,000. And the second deal, we made something like uh, $16,000. So <clears throat> over the course of three years, I wrapped my truck. I made $27,000 from it. Now, you might say, well... Uh, what did the wrap cost, Bill? Well, the wrap cost uh, about $1,000. Or maybe it was, yeah, it was bigger because it was a truck, so it was two grand. So I made 27 grand off of something that cost me two. But I always tell people, hey, don't stop there. The truck only cost 30 grand. So the wrap not only paid for itself, it practically paid for the whole truck. Yeah. So it's a complete no-brainer. Get your vehicle wrapped. So what if you got to drive around with a billboard? I'll tell you what happens. You might be a little bit apprehensive about it when you're first driving it, but sooner or later you'll get comfortable with it and you won't even think about it anymore. I remember driving around and, and looking at people's expressions as they see this truck and you get people that are like, oh, he buys houses and things like that. And, and, it, and in the beginning I was actually almost, yeah, like you said, I was a little leery, like what are these people going to think? And then thinking, you know what, it doesn't matter. I went from a car that I had a Volvo before uh, that had – Eight hundred dollar replacement shocks, and that wasn't even the that wasn't even the labor. And my philosophy was, geez, let me go from a car that costs me money to the one that makes me money. And I think my first deal was in the first year that I had my truck wrapped, and it was uh, yeah, you got that Titan, deal that in, in yeah. South Philly, yeah, yeah, that Titan property, and that was uh, probably about what a twenty five, thirty grand. I thought we made close to thirty on it, so yeah, you, it's probably we both 30. paid for our vehicles at the time. Yeah, I remember one of the first times i'm driving my new truck it was probably less than two weeks and i'm at a red light and this like uh three like 18 year old kids were in a car next to me and one of the kids said i buy houses and he goes who cares and i said people selling their houses you knucklehead who do you think cares you know i, I get people say i buy houses they're like oh you do too <laughs> so another another thing let's talk about that that really i think is fun in this business and 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 he also translates into just a lot of satisfaction is the before and after. So we don't really do a lot of our own uh, renovation work at this point. I mean, I might, you know, do something here or there to, to help out or if there's something quick that we were talking about, maybe, you know, replacing some electrical things that are really easy to do. But when I first started in the business, I remember just this. How fun is it, Phil, to just do some demo, to rip out some drywall, to rip out some cabinets, to to chop that stuff up and flatten it and throw it in the dumpster. It's pretty fun. I, th I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't get a kick out of it anymore like I used to. But I'll tell you what. When I, I first started, I was saying. When yeah, I first yeah, started, when you first I, started enjoyed, sure. yeah, I enjoyed that. I'll tell you what I get out of it now. I get a workout out of it. We just did this house that we, we talked about on the last show, which was a hoarder's house, and it had tons of trash. And I decided to uh, go, into the, uh, go into the house and help uh, the guys that were emptying out all the trash helped them load up the dumpster, mostly because it was an amazing workout. I mean, the house had no air conditioning, so it was pretty hot, and we were doing this in the month of August, so it was pretty hot in the house. And then to go outside in the sun and then pick up a piece of furniture and lift it over a, a seven-foot-high wall of a dumpster and chuck it in there and turn around and go back and go back and go in and out of the house 80 times. By the time you're done working uh, two, two-and-a-half hours, you're spent. I mean, you don't have a whole lot left in the tank. And, and you could go to the gym and you could I, – I play basketball at the gym and I always lift weights. But I, I usually would walk out of emptying out this um, hoarder's house a whole lot more exhausted just because of the you know physical nature of the whole thing and you're trying to get it done. So you're just hustling back and up and down the steps and all that kind of stuff. It's a great workout. And yeah, what's also gratifying and, and just – really just a great feeling is to take a house that's just a piece of junk, something that's just in shambles, something that hasn't, has been neglected for years and years and years, and, and really polish that gem and, and renovate it inside and out and turn it into a thing of beauty. And the satisfaction of that before and after is probably why the, all the TV shows are, are popular, because people want to see the before pictures of an ugly house, and they want to see the after pictures and see the transformation. And that transformation you know, it just gives you a lot of pride in this business. You could say, wow, look what we did. Look at that Look at that accomplishment. Let's do it again. And um, I think that's that part of it is really fun. 
as it does before and after pictures. Yeah, how about the making money part of it? That part's pretty yeah, fun. That's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. <laughs> Look, uh, we call it chunky money. So we, we have portfolio, a large portfolio of uh, real estate that is rented out to people. And we get money that comes in every month from that in our buy and hold investment portfolio. But we also we also do flips from time to time. Not a whole lot of flips, but we do flips. But sometimes we don't even have to flip them. Sometimes we'll find a house that we we buy, and we, we may have the plans to flip it, but what we'd rather do with it is find somebody else who can do all the hard work of flipping it, and we just sell it to another potential flipper and get paid on it. So that's really wholesaling. It's a form of wholesaling where you get a house under contract and you sell it to another investor, or even if you had to settle on it in order to buy it, which we've had to do recently, we had to settle on it, and then we ended up selling it to another investor anyway. And, and in, that, in that case, you have no holding costs. You don't have to do all the work. You don't have to um, gut the whole house down to the studs and maybe find a potential problem. You don't have to go out to the stores and pick all the material. You don't have to deal with all the contractors. You don't have to deal with the inspectors and the local government. And it doesn't take you nine months to turn the thing around. You can turn it around in a matter of weeks. And that is a really cool way. And then you get what we call chunky money. So the stuff that the money that comes from our portfolios is just, you know, regular rental profit that comes in. And that's what helps feed our families. But the chunky money is the favorite money. When when forty grand goes into a bank account and Jeremy and I each take a check for twenty large, that's fun. That turns me on. That gives me a high for a couple of days. Well, it's just like Monopoly, counting your money at the end of the game. That's the fun part, right? <laughs> the game itself is fun, but the result of the game is also fun and, and liberating. Having a job that you don't like and being in that rat race and and uh, and waiting. You know, when people come to me and say, "Well, thank God it's Friday," I have the total opposite expression. I'm like, "Man, Friday already? I wish there were some more times that we could, you know, do some work." I got, you know, I got I got kids, and I really enjoy get involved with all their sports and activities and all that stuff. But sometimes uh, I just wish there was more of the week, you know, to get stuff done. Are you a thank God it's Monday guy? Yeah, thank God it's Monday. Get back to work and get started, right? We should come up with it. It's well, be it. I enjoy working too. I mean, I enjoy it. It's fun. That's one of the reasons I work a lot. All right. So uh, when, when we come back, we're going to talk about how part-time agents can make a great living and still keep your day job. Maybe you're one of those people who actually likes your day job. Or maybe you don't like it, but your wife won't let you quit it. So guess what? We're going to give you a way to make a bunch of money on the side. You're going to want to hear about this because it's very valuable to know. So stick around as we discuss these topics and more. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. Have you heard about the recent low mortgage rates? Have you started thinking about refinancing your home? Why not work with a mortgage lender who puts you first? Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated will provide you personalized service to make sure your home financing meets your needs both now and in the future. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today and learn how the current low interest rates may mean it's the right time for you to buy or refinance. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS number 210764, Equal Housing Lender. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number 2. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number 2.com. Robinson Insurance Group is Addicted to Real Estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215 918 
215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, by investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 77 Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. And on this segment, we're going to talk about being a part-time real estate agent. How You don't have to jump in the business. You can just dip your toe in a little bit, right? So um, we have probably uh, the agents we have in the office, and we probably, we probably have more than 30 now. Some of them are part-time. And if you think about it, it's smart. How long does it take to get your real estate license, Phil? Uh, well, the class can take two weeks if you do it full time. It'll take about six to eight weeks if you do it part time at night. And how long does it take if you do it online? Yeah, I'm doing it online. Well, I'm, I'm taking my Florida real estate license. I'm doing it online, and they have a requirement of uh, I want to say 43 hours. So it's 43 hours total. But the funny thing is about Florida, they say that if you're doing an online course, you don't have any time constraints. So what I do is I. I watch the online videos. It's like a, it's almost like a YouTube video with a slideshow with the guy talking about the key topics and they do quizzes and stuff. And uh, the, it has a little option that you can speed them up. <laughs> so I, I listen to it at two speed. So I, I can watch an hour video in a half an hour. And and uh, it also automatically modulates so it does, they don't sound like chipmunks. But they do speak fast. But the, Give I found, us an idea of what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, this topic we're going to talk about, <laughs> so it's it's fast. It's it's funny. The the thing that's um you know some of it's just is boring to learn, but once you once you go through it, I mean they're talking about what are the penalties and what are the section and who elects the board of directors. It's it's of the uh, of the commission. Well, it's elected by the the. Uh, oh, send me that yeah, video. Yeah. I don't want to miss that. Well, the governor picks this guy, and it's an appointed position. It's a very prestigious position, and then they pick the five board members. And it, it, I mean, why, why do I need to know this stuff to sell real estate? I really don't care. So, but, uh, but you know, you go through the class, and, and uh, once you're done, yeah, you have your license, and surely you have to do continuing education. But that's only what 14 hours every couple of years. Every yeah, year? it's no big deal. Yeah, it's no big so deal. So you're definitely going to learn, you know, some things. You're going to learn a lot if you go get your real estate license, but. Mostly what these schools do, at least some of the schools do, is they focus on just helping you pass the test. So it's a lot of memory recall of, uh, of a whole lot of potential questions that are going to be on the exam so that you can pass the test. And then the office that you hang your license at is supposed to really teach you how to become an agent. Now, if you want to be an agent, that's cool. If you want to be an investor, we're the guys you want to talk to. If you want to be an investor slash agent... We're the guys you want to talk to because nobody out there teaches people how to be real estate investors. But we do. And you want to know why? Here's the secret, guys. There's more money in investing than there is in being an agent. A lot more. And there's, there's a benefit to be both because if you oftentimes will go to see a house that we can't buy, it just doesn't make sense for us to buy it. Maybe it's a, the house is too expensive or maybe the person just wants too much money for it and – they're a motivated seller. You spent all this money doing marketing, and you got a motivated seller. Are they just not motivated enough to, to take a discount? Or maybe they're not in a position to. You could always just grab the listing. And, yeah, maybe you're making 3% on a, on a you know $300,000 house. That's not bad. No, it's, it's not, not bad. bad. But uh, what, what really happens to us most of the time is, uh, for example, this hoarder's house that we were just talking about. We bought this house from the owner. He needed us to settle in five days, and, and we wanted to – clean out a lot of the trash and, and, and cut down some trees. So we decided to um, 
to settle on it in five days and not even try to sell it to anyone else until after we bought it. And then when we – so now we, we found a buyer for it. He's under contract, and we're settling on it uh, pretty soon in about uh, nine days. And when we sell it, we're selling it to the guy for 170 grand, and we're going to get 3% commission on that. Now, if I didn't have a real estate license, I'd have to pay some agent to facilitate that deal unless it was a deal that we did off-market. But this one wasn't an off-market deal. Off-market deal means a deal that – is going to be uh, completed without any realtors involved. And we found this buyer by marketing the property on the multiple listing service, which is basically saying to all the realtors out there, hey, come look at my property and bring your, bring your potential buyers to buy my property. So in this particular case, a commission was going to have to be paid to the other agent, and therefore you wouldn't, you know, probably needed an agent on the selling side, and since I happen to be one, to us, we're not actually going to cut a check to ourselves for me being the agent, uh, because Jeremy and I own this property together, but what we will do is save $5,000 on commissions that we would have had to pay an agent had we not had a license, so it makes perfect sense. In fact, I always tell people the math is, based on what it's going to cost you to have a real estate license, if you do just one real estate deal... On average, every two years, your license is free. Yeah, yeah, that's all it takes. And depending on the price of the deals, I mean, you can do an expensive deal and it's paid for for five years or six years or whatever. So uh, it depends on you know it depends on the price point. If somebody's buying an apartment building, think of the money they would save. You know, sure, we're uh, we're looking at a deal in Florida right now, and the building is like you know almost three million dollars, and the commission to the uh, listing, the, the commission to the buyer's agent, we're the buyers. To the buyer's agent, he's going to make like $87,000 if we actually get to settlement with this deal. And that's what prompted Jeremy to go out and get his Florida real estate. Yeah, 87000 That would be a pretty good savings. Yeah, right? yeah that's, that's more so, than most people make in a year. You get that from one deal. So we're talking about people that might have a full-time job that could get in the business part-time. And even if you're a part-time investor or a part-time agent, there's still a, quite a bit of money to be made. You can like your day job, and you can make more money on the side than you can in your day job, but still keep your day job because you like what you do. You know, So think about it. People, people don't go to the phone book or the yellow pages and call up a real estate uh, agent in order to find – You know, it's not like you um, – it's not like a plumber where there's an emergency and all of a sudden you have to bring out the bring out the phone book or Google, you know, who should I use and look at the reviews. Most people know a real estate agent. And if you're the person that they know and they like you and they trust you, they're going to give a listing to you. So that you can get listings just by accident, just through your network, your friends, your family, the people that you work with. All those people are potential, potential uh, deals, whether they're buyers or they're sellers. And I think that it's worthwhile just to get your license just to accidentally get some listings. So let's say you you have a friend that's uh, talking about moving to another location. They have a $200,000 house. I mean, heck, 3% of $200,000 is six grand. You know, making, the, making a little six grand, do that three times a year, you know, another 18000 on the side. Not bad. Yeah. And what are you doing? You're driving some people around on the weekends and at nighttime? It's not that much of a burden for you. And understanding real estate, if you're an agent and you be, and you do it part-time, you're going to learn so much that when it comes time for you to buy a house for your family or to upgrade your house or to downgrade your house or to help out people that you care about, like your parents and your aunts and your uncles and your friends, boy, you're going to be in a great position to do that and get paid to do it. Because, you know, in the real estate business, usually it's the seller who's actually paying the realtors' commissions, not the buyers. So if the people you know are buyers, and let's just say you're a millennial, okay? Boy, what a great little job to have working as a realtor in your part-time. Why? Everybody you know, okay, if you're 25 years old, everybody you know is on the in the process of moving out of their parents' house or in the process of upgrading the apartment they're renting, and realtors can help people rent or in the process of buying their first house, and their first house isn't going to be big enough once uh, once a third member of the family comes along, so they'll need a bigger house then, and the process just keeps going and going. Okay, now usually, you know, I'm 50, so most of the people that I know, uh, they're already pretty much settled in their houses. 
they may be downgrading sometime in the future, but uh, that could that could happen for a very long time from now. They may want to buy a second home in Florida. That's something I'd love to help them out with. So there's all kinds of stages in life where it makes more sense to be an agent rather than not. And I'd say if you're in your 20s, anywhere between, say, 25 and 40 is a wonderful window to have a real estate license and be able – because everybody you know is going through these life changes. If you're just getting started in real estate investing, I mean, just, just having your license to get access to the MLS is phenomenal. If you want to, even if you're buying a house that's off the market, you know, you have access to the ones that are on the market, but even if you're buying a house that's off the market, where are you going to run your comparables? You need to see what something's worth. So having that access is, uh, is worthwhile. And if you can, you know, have at your fingertips, be able to run, you know, what's sold in the last six months in the development that I have an opportunity in, you can, you can see whether you get a good deal or not. You know, you can negotiate the deals. And, and the part of the business that's fun is, is negotiating the deals. We, um, you know, we love finding sellers and dealing with them directly. But then when we have a property for sale, what do we do? We always list on the MLS. We, we, we never do it for sale by owner because you want to have exposure to the, the most people possible to get the highest price. And the MLS is where people go to look for deals. That's where the majority of people find their deals. So you want to be in that service. And if you could save the money by listing it yourself, number one, not only do you have – the, you save the money, but you also have more control. You can change the pictures. You can update the description. You don't have to bother anybody to do it. You just log in, change what you need to change, and and log out. And hopefully, um, you know, hopefully you make money just in the in the ones that you're saving money on for yourself. You know. You, you... Well, uh, you know, we have three offices: one in Huntington Valley, one in Montgomeryville, and one in Hatboro. But where you live really has nothing to do with it. I mean, you could live in Glen Olden, which is nowhere near our three offices. You could still hang your license with us. You can live in Erie, Pennsylvania, as long as it's within Pennsylvania where we have yeah, our, yeah. our brokerage. Yeah, right. that's it. Um, can you live in Jersey? Uh, you can live in Jersey and have a PA real estate license for yeah, sure. Sure you can, right. Yeah, because yeah. I know lots of agents who have their Jersey license who live in Pennsylvania. Yeah, now you, can, you, you would have access to some parts of New Jersey are on the same MLS that we are, but you can't transact there. Well, I mean, you people who live a, right over the bridge who really want to invest sure. in Philly. This is probably Philly is a much more of a uh, investor-friendly town based on the prices of the houses. So where you live in relationship to our office has nothing to do with it. What should have a heck of a lot to do with it is your mentality. If you just want to be a typical real estate agent, well, there's lots of places you can hang your license because that's what 99.99% of the offices out there do is they, they just have real estate agents, realtors, who work with buyers and work with sellers, and they f help to facilitate the deal. But what we do is we look at that scenario and say, geez, I'm the agent, and the buyer's uh, making an amazing deal on a property, and the seller's walking out with an enormous check. I want to be one of those people, okay? So it doesn't take you very long in this business to figure out that the money is made being an investor. So let me tell you something that we can do for you if you hang your license with us. Let's just say that you find a house that uh, can be a very good investment property. Now, your traditional realtor is going to knock on the door and try to find the owner and ask for the listing so he can sell that house to somebody else. But at Addicted to Real Estate, we're going to train you to buy that house for yourself. And that's right. Buy it for yourself with none of your own money. You know I'm the author of a book called How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money. And this is one of the ways that you're going to be able to do it. Now... You come to us, you hang your license with us, you come to us and you say, hey, Phil, hey, Jeremy, I just bought this amazing house at 123 Oak Lane, and I bought this house, uh, I just got it under contract, but I got a problem, I don't have any money. Now, we're not going to lend you the money, but what we will do is we'll partner with you on it. That's right. So understand something. As an investor, it takes a long time to find these deals. You've got to work hard to find them. It also takes a long time to raise the money. We've already got all the money, and you can use our money. So you just bring this deal to us. We will fund your deal. We'll be partners on it. You'll get a piece. We'll get a piece, and we'll keep rocking and rolling. So imagine if, you know, 50% of this business is looking for money and 50% is looking for deals. How'd you like it if we taught you how to find deals and we lent you all the money you needed to buy the house as long as we were partners with you? You could be a real estate investor using none of your own money. Now, keep in mind, I didn't say no money. I just said none of your own money. <laughs> so 
What a wonderful value. Imagine that, that you just met us three weeks ago and we're already going to be in a position where we know you well enough to lend you money to be your partner on a real estate deal. That's a really powerful thing. And most real estate agencies, when they get a new agent in the office, they teach them how to take on clients, how to attract and take on clients. If you think about it, what we do is take, teach people how to take on houses, right? We're not, we're not looking for clients. We're saying, here's how you take on a house. Here's well, we're how you we're manage not against them looking for clients, but why would we want them to look for houses? Because there's what in it? Money. Lots of money. More money. More money. Sure. More money for sure. I always, you know, think about this. I always say, if the, the, really the goal of the business is to borrow millions of dollars and have your tenants pay it off. If you borrow millions of dollars and you can have somebody else pay it off, isn't it pretty obvious that you can have a million dollars in net worth that easily? And that doesn't consider what, it, what it's going to go up in value from the time you buy it until, you know, whenever you sell it or when you refinance it, whatever. I bought a house for each of my kids when they were born that I allocated as their, as their college tuition if they do want to go to college. And you think about it, all you have to do is buy a $200,000 house, get tenants in there to pay the mortgage every month, and in 18 years, that house should have doubled in value twice, it's, and it could have paid down too. So it's good enough. You could just refinance the house and, and send them to school. Well, who knows what school's going to be at that point in time. 18 years from now, it probably could be $400,000. Who knows? All right, guys. So stick around as we discuss uh, when we come back how to get rich. How to get rich in the real estate investing business. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name's Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Robinson Insurance Group is Addicted to Real Estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going! Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I think we're the only real estate investing radio in this area, are we? Is there any real estate investing shows? I think we're it. I've never heard of a show. Yeah. I mean, so. there's definitely real estate shows uh, where people are talking about various aspects of real estate, like money that uh, they can you know, get you a mortgage for, or uh, Mark Cumberland's got a nice show where he talks about... You know, mostly for agents, and he's looking for buyers and sellers, that kind of thing. The real estate market mm -hmm. in general. Right. But, yeah, we must be the best real estate investing show if we're the only one. We must be the best. <laughs> hey, Macaroni, what's going on with you, man? Just hanging out. How about you guys? You Have learning anything time? You learning anything about real estate investing listening to this show? All the time. Um, definitely when I get my own place, I'm going to pick you guys without a doubt, without even thinking about it. Yeah, okay. You should, you should get a multi-unit property. Live in one, rent out the others, and live for free. What do you think of that? Yeah. 
Doers equal money. I love that idea. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about how to get rich in this business. To me, without question, the best way to make money in this business is by doing buy and hold deals. So it's not as sexy and as exciting as a getting a big fat check, which you usually don't get when you do a buy and hold deal. But you know, you grab properties that are good quality properties that you that are in good areas that you're going to be proud to own, and the kind of things that other people are going to be attracted to these properties as well. Because you need people to be attracted to your properties because they're the ones that are going to rent it and pay for it all. You're not going to pay the mortgage. You're not going to pay the taxes. You're not going to pay the insurance. Your tenants are going to. So you got to make sure you got a nice property that people are going to want to rent from you. And not just for today, but for a long time in the future. And then what you do is you set that property up, and it runs for you. Hopefully like a fine-tuned, well-oiled machine. Now, it doesn't always happen like that, but it's happened to me many times in my life. I've got a property uh, right now with two tenants living in it. It's, it's an over-under duplex in Ronhurst. And I haven't been to that property in probably three years. And um, I met each of the tenants a couple of times, but I've had tenants that I rented to over the phone, and I never met them, ever. And there was a woman who lived in my property with her son for like four years, and I never met her. I talked to her on the phone a bunch of times, but that's the kind of business I like to run, one that has minimum involvement from me. So where do you make the money? Well, you sometimes you can make money when you buy it, and, and we definitely want to teach people how to do that because a great place to make money is when you buy. But typically in a buy and hold deal that you keep for a long period of time, the bulk of the money that you're going to make is at the end when you're ready to either sell it or use one of the other exit strategies that we teach people. Now, one of them would be selling it to somebody – getting a big, fat, down money check. Let's just suppose that you had a property in Philly that was worth, uh, oh, I'll keep the math easy, we'll say 100 grand. And it's a row home in some neighborhood, and you're selling it for 100 grand. Buyer comes in, and, uh, you know, you, uh, you take a, a big, fat, down payment check from them, but then you carry the paper for the rest of it. So, Jeremy, why don't you explain a little bit about selling a property and – providing some financing to the buyer. Yeah, this game is a finance game. The long-term buy and hold is definitely a finance game. You're, you're making a spread. So if you can make the spread, you're, if you think about it, you're when people buy low, sell high, it's what you're doing with a rental too. You're just paying a lower monthly payment than you're accepting as a rental check. And a hybrid of that between buy and sell and buy and rent is a rent to own. We do a lot of rent to owns where we'll get Somebody put, let's say, 10% down, but they don't have the best credit in the world, so we'll take the risk with them. Why will we take the risk? Because they're giving us 10% down. On your $100,000 example, they're going to give us 10000 down towards a $100,000 purpose. We will um, we'll take that chance because we know that you know for them to walk away from ten grand is a silly move. Why would they do that? So sometimes people just need a second chance. Maybe they got a divorce. Maybe they had a medical issue. Maybe there's some legitimate reason that their credit got uh, not up to par and – and oftentimes we even find, let's say, contractors, somebody that doesn't uh, doesn't show all their income. So we slap them around a little bit, say, hey, start reporting your income, and you can qualify for a loan. But in the meantime, do a rent-to-own on this house. Or let's say it's a house that needs work. What, what better person to sell it to than a contractor that could do the work themselves? And they're in there improving your asset. The other, um, So a rent-to-own is a great situation where you can get a little bit of a chunk of money, and as long as you apply that down money, it might be non-refundable, but as long as you apply it towards the purchase price, you're, you're, you know, we're not taxed on it in that year. We're only taxed on it in the event that they fail or in the, in the event that they succeed and exercise their option to buy the property. So that's just one way. The other way is selling it on installment sale. I sold my old primary residence on installment sale where I'm accepting monthly payments, and they don't get the deed until until the uh, until it's all paid off. So when they go to refinance it, they're, they're doing an installment sale. So technically, I, according to – the IRS, I sold the property. I just haven't realized all the money yet. So, so by selling it in an installment sale, what you mean is, is that you went from being the owner to being the bank, essentially, to being well, the loan owner. I'm still the owner. I'm just selling it on layaway. You're still the owner on record. I'm still the owner of record. I'm selling it on terms. So I'm selling it on installments. They pay me monthly installments, and not until they those installments are paid off 
do they get it? Think about a, a vehicle. When you lease a vehicle and then you're going to buy it at the end of the lease, your some of your installments go towards paying down the the uh, you know the equity. You, you're buying some of the equity each and every month, and some of it gets applied to interest. Well, the same thing on installment sale. Part of it's interest. Part of it's you know buys the equity. But then when they cash you out, let's say they refinance it. I, I have a, a five year installment sale, but they, maybe they pay me as if it was a thirty year mortgage, but they're, they have a balloon that's due in five years, so they have to refinance it within that five-year period. So that's just a way, the rent-to-own is a way where they don't buy it, they just have the right to buy it at some point. The installment sale is a contract where they are buying it, they've agreed that they will buy it, or they're in the process of buying it. And then the last thing is, is you know, take it one step further, and you could sell it with owner financing. Now, if you're selling it with owner financing, you want to get some more money down. That would be a reason you would do that. And let's say somebody's going to put 30% down, well, if they're if they're going to put 30% down, they probably want to have some level of security. They want to be on the deed. So at that point, you can record a mortgage against the property that you're selling and accept 30% down up front and then accept payments each and every month that's recorded as a lien against the house that they now own. So you know, in the, in the first scenario, you're on the deed. You're renting it to them. They have the option to buy it. The installment sale, you're still on the deed, but they have the obligation to buy it over installments. And then in the third way, you, you give them the deed for their down money, and then you accept payments for the rest. Well, one thing that you know you can't help but notice when you're in this business is that a lot of experienced real estate investors, people who've been doing it their whole lives, and they're, they get to a certain point where they're, when they get to a certain age, it doesn't seem like they just want to deal with it anymore. Now, maybe they're burned out. Some of them are burned out. Maybe they just don't want to. <laughs> they fixed all the toilets and fielded all the phone calls and rented all the apartments that they want to anymore. And the truth is, it is in this beautiful business, you don't have to keep owning them. You know, Jeremy talked about a bunch of different strategies, installment sales, rent to own, or just flat out, what I had suggested for this conversation was just flat out selling the properties and becoming the bank. And what a lot of real estate investors do when they get older is they convert all of that equity that they've accrued over the years you know, and all they really did was buy a house at one price and it doubled to another price. Meanwhile, the mortgage was one number and the tenants paid it down for 15, 20 years. So now there's a huge gap between what the house is worth today and what they owe on it. And then in that situation, it's just easy. Sell them off, become the bank, collect a bunch of money. We know a real estate investor, a very successful real estate investor in Florida, what he did was he took about half of his properties. So hypothetically, let's say he had 100 properties. He took half of those properties and he said, he said I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep these 50 and I'm going to sell these 50. So he went off and he sold these 50 properties and then he did a 1031 exchange with that money, which is a strategy the government allows you to do. You can use it to uh, sell a house and then roll the money into a new purchase. Well, in this case, what he did is he sold these 50 properties and he used the money from the sale of those properties to pay off completely and to fix up the other 50 properties that he decided to keep. So now he has 50 properties still worth millions of dollars and they don't have any mortgages on them and they're all rented up and they're all in good shape. So now he could just live off the income stream of those properties for the rest of his life. Now, 50 properties might sound like a lot to you, but to a professional real estate investor, managing 20, 30, 40, 50 properties is not really that big of a deal. It really isn't. Well, and he upgraded his portfolio. So he would sell, he would sell let's say, $250,000 properties and buy a $300,000 property on the water. And uh, maybe he'd sell two 300s and buy a 600 on the water. At that point, the kind of tenants he's going to attract that want to be on a $600,000 place on the water don't really have a lot of hassles. I mean, you're, when you're renting or to, to somebody that's uh, saying – do you have room to put my 40-foot boat in the backyard? Right. You know, that's probably a pretty good tenant, right? And for people out there who can't see themselves buying 50 houses, I'll give you a much simpler strategy. What if you started right now and you bought just one house a year and you bought them for 10 years? And then you stopped buying them and you never bought any more. And then you kept those 10 properties. I can assure you that once you learn a little bit about this business, I could manage 10 properties in my sleep. I mean, and, and never even go to the properties except for maybe when they're vacant and I need to rent them. Uh, that's easy. That's really easy. Nothing difficult about managing 10 properties. 
right? So what if you just sat on those 10 properties for you know, a good period of time? Let's say 15 years minimum. The longer you hold them, the better. And when you're ready, well, boy, you could do a lot of different things with those houses, couldn't you? Any one of the strategies that Jeremy just talked about. You can sell them in installment sales. You could do rent-to-owns. You can use them as like, I'm a poker player, so I'll give you a poker analogy. Think of these 10 houses as like, you know, there are 10 stacks of chips sitting on the table, and I get to use them as I see fit. If something goes wrong in my life and I need some money right now to help solve some problems, boy, it'd be nice to have 10 houses where I could go off and sell one or two of them and fix those problems. Cash in some chips, right? Sure, sure. You just cash in some chips, all right? So it's a beautiful business. It's one of the reasons I love it so much is the fact that, you know, you can do so many different things. You can go so many different ways. And each piece of real estate in my life I think of as a business to itself. That's right. Each piece of real estate is a business, right? And some businesses that I own do better than other businesses that I own. But each deal before I buy it, I think of it, it's no different than if I'm buying a, uh, a pizza place in a, in a retail shopping center. I'm going to evaluate what's it going to cost me to run this. What's it going to cost me in dollars? What's it going to cost me in time? What's it going to cost me in aggravation? Cost uh, of a whole lot of different things that come with a business. And in the end, what am I going to get out of it? And is it worth it to me to, to have all of those costs, emotional, physical, and financial costs, is it worth it to me for the benefit that I'm going to get from it? And if it is, then do it. And that's the way I think of each piece of real estate. You know, you can always get rid of the ones that are the marginal ones or the ones that maybe you didn't do such a good job of negotiating on. And, and that's exactly what this guy did when he sold off half of his properties. He kept all the ones that had the equity, that had the great tenants, that were already fixed up, that were in great neighborhoods. So he didn't have any more baloney to deal with. All right, guys, thanks for listening in to today's show. We're going to have uh, much more much more shows to talk about as far as what, the, uh, what you can do in this real estate business as an investor. So listen in Thursdays at 3 and Saturdays at 6 on WWDB, 860 AM. You listen online at WWDBAM.com. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. So what did you learn today? You learned that this business is fun and that you can be a part-time agent and that you can become rich in this business, Okay. So those are three wonderful things. Now go out and do it. If you want to learn more about it, look us up at AddictedToRealEstate.com. I'm Phil Falcone, and thanks for listening to this show. Yeah, you know that's all right.